we're going to get started on doing a teardown of the Galaxy S3. As you can see over in this window, we've got the Galaxy camera looking down at the Galaxy S3, and we'll be getting started on that. So, uh, well, without any further ado, let's just get started on it. Hopefully this camera will stay. All right, so we have here a i9300 Galaxy S3, and this was sent by Mobile Tech Videos to me. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this device fast booting. If we can get it fast booting, then the device will be fully recoverable. Maybe not right now, but in the future. So, this process is going to be probably around one to two hours or so. And, uh, yeah, I'm just getting these screws out of the device. Josh didn't send it with a battery or uh, any of the accessories that go with the device. Uh, that's the way he gets it as well, so don't have any of that. Uh, however, I do have batteries that are compatible. The same pinout is used on the Galaxy the Galaxy uh, which device is that? Uh, the uh, Galaxy uh, doggone this device. Galaxy Nexus, that's it. And it really doesn't help that I've got my Galaxy camera right above me making noise. I can hear everything I say. Again, it's echoing. I guess uh, you guys must be hearing about the same. Uh, hearing about about one second lag time. Now, I don't always use this uh, screwdriver here in the automatic mode. It's a little bit quicker if I just spin the screwdriver. So usually I do that on those XDA videos that I do. And that is just a little bit of a trick I've learned is just to spin the screwdriver. It's a really good screwdriver. This is a uh, general screwdriver. And bought it at Lowe's. So now if I've pulled everything off, I think. No. Need to get these other two screws out, and then the top will just come right off. All right. So, here we have the board. We'll go ahead and remove this connector. And this piece should just pop right out. I'm having a little bit of a problem grabbing it, though. There we go. And let's get all these connectors off the board. I have no idea whose device this is, so if you're watching and I mess up, just ignore it. Now this is a totally hard brick device, so the idea here is we can really do no harm with this experimental procedure. All right, so we have here the Exynos chip and over here we have the EMMC. 
and I believe somewhere over here we should be able to find the resistor that we need to short out. Now I may need to go and look up the service manual for this device to determine which which resistor it is. I'm pretty sure it's going to be one of these two right here. You probably can't see that on camera. Let's see if I can get a little bit better light here. Can you see those at all? Probably not. All right. So let's go. And I'm going to start up a screen share. In just a second. Share this. All right. Now I know I have a link somewhere in here where we can get a manual. All right. We'll go back to the R and D thread and the. Samsung PDF. Now it's downloading. There we go. Let me screen share this one. Screen share. And there we go. So we'll bring it on down here. And there's a picture of the board which shows how to do the bootloader restoration on the i9300. There we go. And it was a different resistor than what I was looking at. Okay, so we have three resistors in a line. So those three resistors would be these three resistors right there at the tip of this. I don't know if you can see that or not but they're right there next to this capacitor and under this transistor. There's three resistors right there. And those are the three that we're after. And it would appear that it is the furthest one over to this side, as I was showing it on camera. Yeah. All right, so fire up the soldering iron, and we'll just bridge that resistor right over. And we can put in this SD card over here. Now, this SD card actually contains a bootloader, which uh, Dominique has been developing, and I've been testing on the Galaxy camera. You're watching on the Galaxy camera right now. So I guess we've done a pretty good job since you're watching it on watching this video on the device that this bootloader was developed on. Now the Open Galaxy bootloader is a port of U-Boot with the proper drivers to execute, well, the proper authentication to actually execute on any Galaxy device. And if you'll just give me a minute, uh, I'm going to put some water on this sponge here. I don't want to be doing things improperly while working with such small electronics. I'll be right back.
So, in order to make a very small solder connection and get soldering iron very, very clean, and just drop the solder on the tip is all that's really needed. A little tiny bit. Do you think you could zoom in a bit? Oh. Actually, I can't, Dominic. Uh, okay. I would like to, but I really can't. Uh, however, if you look at this picture that I've got up right now, that shows exactly where I'm working with. Now, you know, uh, I really wish I could, but the only controls I have inside okay. of the talk, uh, the, uh, the Google Plus app, is the volume controls. All right, so since this device is completely ruined, has a bad EMMC, I'm going to just solder right over this. And I think that's it. Just inspecting the work. All right. Now, if we were to do this on a device that actually still worked, you'd want to get some magnet wire. You can get these out of relays and stuff like that. Magnet wires are extremely small wires. I mean, like, we're talking about the size of a human hair, uh, depending on the gauge of them, of course, but... This wire that I've got here in my hand that I'm showing you on the camera is probably a few thousand feet, a few hundred feet or something, but it's just a little tiny spool that I grabbed out of a resistor, or uh, out of a relay, I'm sorry. All right, so next we need to hook up the bus pirate, I guess. Uh, the magnet wire, I'm sorry, I got off topic. Uh, the, the magnet wire would actually hook up to a switch, which we could use external to the device and that would allow us to decide if we want to boot from the internal MMC or the external SD. I'm opening up a terminal so I can communicate with the bus pirate. There you go. Now we'll run script three. All right. Now these leads right here are active and I should be able to just hook up a pin to the bus pirate here on this black lead. And now I need the port. You might need power as well. Well, yeah, yeah. I've got a USB cable that'll provide the power. Uh, the uh, power will just be a last-minute thing. Not exactly sure where the UART is. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and just switch over to this window here and Dominic if you would let me know if you see something 
uh, nothing. Of course. <clears throat> well, that. And what I'm doing is I'm just unplugging and replugging in the USB port. That's where uh, I'm seeing uh, in the Hangout uh, on the bottom, in the miniature, I'm seeing uh, various uh, stuff. Right, and that's just non-grounded connections because... Yeah, uh, but I'm when I zoom it in, I, I can... Ah, oh, okay, nothing. Uh, never mind. All right. Okay, I will yell where I, when I see something that makes sense. I might be doing this a little bit too quick. It takes about three seconds for the uh, Open Galaxy bootloader to get past BL2. Yeah, plus. Mm, as uh, BL3 will uh, just turn off if it doesn't detect battery, I think. Uh, I've run it before, it'll at least show some stuff. Uh, yeah, shoot. Mm -hmm. Alright, those two are <clears throat> ground. All right, this might be the money right here. No. Nothing. Now, I want to say that it's probably going to be under the SD card shield. Because I think I remember there was a port under there. Nothing there. Nope. Nope. And this is the final one for this port. Nothing. No. <clears throat> ha ha! Ah, there, is some. there we go. We got something here. All right. So next up, I guess uh, the next task will be to hook up. Um, the, wait a second. There was has put prompt already that it can get kernel image. Did you see that? Yes, I did. But uh, what I've got to do now is I've got to hook up a permanent UART so I can actually use it. Yeah. Okay, take your time. Yeah. That's great. That was a preview for those of you guys who are watching. I guess there's uh, 21 of you guys watching. Uh, that is the Open Galaxy Bootloader. Mm, so there's actually someone watching. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a couple of people watching. I asked last night on Google Plus if anyone wanted to see it. And there was a few people who said, yeah, so... Posted it up on my YouTube stream. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm tinning the magnet wire. And the reason I'm using magnet wire is because just about every other type of wire will damage these pads if any kind of pressure is put on them. All right. Now I'm going to put some flux onto the board and tin those pads. You could say I'm fluxing it up. Fluxing it all up. What I'm using here is a needle. What are you doing, Dominic?
Hey, Dominic, you can mute your microphone, man. Okay. All right. Now what I'm doing here is just getting a little bit of solder onto the pads. Maybe I'll just get too much solder onto the pads and then to go back and remove what solder I don't need. There we go. Need some flux. Flux it all up again. Of course, what I'm doing here is I'm actually setting this up to be a development device, so it's a little bit more complicated than just normally working on putting the SD mod on. You already saw that. And if you're just tuning in, go back about 10 minutes and you can see me doing the modification to boot from SD. All right, mm, not quite. Very fine procedure here. Those of you who might not do this otherwise, this is a relatively low area of danger to the board. Got to clean this up a little bit. The worst thing you can do is get too much solder on and then you just clean off the solder before you turn on the device. Actually, the worst thing you can do is unsoldering uh, 10 resistors at once. Well, right here, there's no resistors. I can't really do a close-up. Darn it, the solder just doesn't want to take. extra solder on the board there. The main difficulty I'm having is that this wire is so small it doesn't want to keep its own bends. wire up.
And I need to clear off a little area of this wire so that I can hook up the bus pirate to it. Alright, so we don't need that needle anymore because we just found the TX line from the device and now we got to locate the RX line. We'll do the same thing, but this time we'll just boot up the Open Galaxy bootloader and from there we can simply hit enter and watch for output while moving the position around. Getting the positioning right. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Now the wire came off again. Yeah. Technical difficulty after technical difficulty. Going to resolder this wire back on in place. All right. Just about got it. There we go. All right, now if everything's working properly, we should be seeing some output as soon as I plug in this cable. There we go. <laughs> Dominic, was that you? What are you doing? Don't you know that <clears throat> movie? Uh, oh yeah, we can see that uh, internal LMC seems to be damaged, but we can know what kind of damage it is. Uh, it obviously can't, isn't able to communicate with it because it can't even read info about the uh, size of the internal MMC. Uh, huh. Well, the EMMC is disabled. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> what but if the you... interesting thing is, uh, why is it saying that NMC device 1 is 0 megs? Well, if it's disabled, it can't communicate with it, so it won't... Uh, uh, uh -huh. It probably... Uh, it's probably getting some signals from it, but isn't able to interpret them properly because it's not not found, but zero max. Uh, wait, so you actually disabled it, that right? Yeah. Uh, okay. 
And what if you try to boot up with enabled MC? Can you do it? No. Ah, too bad. No, this device is uh, hard break. Well, uh, I was wondering what what will happen with, when you try to. Um, Oh, that is a good question. I haven't tried that. Did you disable it permanently, or? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I was actually counting on uh, uh, testing what we can do with with the MMC. Um, All right, just a second. I'm unplugging this and plugging it back in. Hopefully, I can get something. Do you think you could uh, you could make uh, some kind of battle like you did with a Galaxy Camera on the AMC resistor? Well, it's possible. Uh, right now, I'm looking for the UART RX line. Okay. Tell me if you see anything, because what I'm doing is I'm plugging it in and then holding the enter button. Well, uh, it's entering the uh, the console anyway, so you you can just uh, you can just probe for uh, TX. Right, it's unless the device freezing. is freezing up. It, it's ah okay. But I don't think it's freezing. It shouldn't. You might be right. Let me just try to scan across all the pins then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would look like it, huh? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That's it. <coughs> all right, fast boot. It didn't hang, right? There we go, we got fast boot. All right, so now I've disconnected that line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into a different window here. Screen share. And there you go. So I'll go CD desktop. Oh, wait, I want download. Alright, so we'll just put over this RAM disk and Z image. Pseudo fast boot flash no boot G C Z G C U. It's Z image from uh, S3, right? No, 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 Galaxy Camera. Are you sure? I thought that we we did replace it, but uh, maybe not. Oh, did we? Okay, anything on your art? I haven't hit enter yet. Okay. All right, <laughs> so let's let's do this. All right, and it flashed. Let me screen share over to the UART window. Okay. And here we go. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Uh, this looks indeed li like uh, Galaxy Cam stock kernel because it didn't output anything else <coughs> but uh, the very early print of the kernel and compressor. Which is in uh, in the heat of of kernel. I'm going to get an i ninety three hundred uh, cyanogen mod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had it right from me. Yeah. So if we can get that cyanogen mod kernel, then we should just be able to boot it right up, right? Well, uh, don't get cyanogen mod uh, the the stock one, but the one from me. Okay. Okay. You have that. Can you send me a link? Uh, I. I did. You tried it before, remember? Uh, I do not remember. It was from uh, from Galaxy S3. Uh, do you remember the name of the file? Uh, no. <laughs> 
Well, I'm looking for it right now. I think it will be somewhere in my goo. Uh, okay. So what I will do is I will get this device ready again and okay. get it booting back up. Yeah. Uh, put in link in the Hangout chat. I think you you, you may have it in the, your downloads directory. Just look for GS3. All right, so we got Bass booted up again. The link is GS3 debug image. Yeah. You should have, right, I have that. I have that. I have that. Pseudo yeah. fast boot boot. And there we go. Sending it on over, and there we go. We got it booting. And we got it crashing. Whee! Yeah. Oh well, we got it crashing. <laughs> but hey. Okay. Uh, All right. So, so we got some work to do on the bootloaders now. I think. I think it will. Can you can you scroll up a little bit more? More. That's what I'm doing. More. Did the, uh, okay. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly the same place it's crashed before. Uh, so, I don't know what to do with it. Actually, hmm. Well, maybe maybe I should bring Lee in here. Uh, Actually, I'm just inviting Lee. <laughs> I just. Well, I was thinking last. Two days on what could be different, and I still got no idea. But hmm, there's something weird. Um, you see the content on PC register? <coughs> yes. Yeah, it's completely out of anything. It shouldn't be there, and actually. I think that if you reboot it, it will be different. That uh, this might be the uh, the only difference uh, between consecutional reboots. Uh, the PC content. Uh, can you try to reboot it and uh, inspect PC? Sure. It was free, uh, free seven something. I think. Hmm. My needle slipped off. All right. Oh, I didn't hit enter. So put the needle back on. Enter. And it didn't take. There we go. And now I'll do that fast boot again. Okay. And let's get that PC One. register. 3F2E. Oh. E uh, can you save the whole lock somewhere? Sure. From the all reboots you, you did. Possibly. Um, just a second. Select all. Copy. All right, just give me a second here.
All right. Almost got it up, and if anyone wants to take a look at this log, I'm going to screen share it. You can see the URL at the top. Uh, well, I actually don't. It's one oh, okay. dot Ubuntu dot com uh, slash one five zero zero three one one. That's interesting because I I remember that PC was obviously different on the Galaxy camera boot, uh, but but it's the same kernel and the same bootload there. So I see no reason. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is uh, this is from the same kernel booted on Galaxy Car and. That one is from Galaxy S3. I'm not seeing you. You don't have an image. What are you talking about? Which one is from GS3? Uh, uh, the, the one the, uh, I posted the last one mm, on the chat of the Hangout. Do you the see GS. Ah. All right, I see that. Um, I'm wondering. Well, looks like some some major failure when it tries to start up a level two cache. But I'm not. Uh, certain what could cause it. We still got clock setup difference than uh, the Asbert does, but I don't think it should matter. It's rather something different. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. This uh, kernel says it's not tainted, but the kernel version says it's dirty. Well, this is... Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's where it's kernel naming. Dirty because it's not tagged uh, commit in the... Uh, in the JIT repository as far as I know, and not tainted because it doesn't doesn't include proprietary modules or something like that. All right, I see a lot of you guys are just tuning in right now, so for those of you wondering, I've actually got this bus pirate here uh, hooked up to this Galaxy S3 board, and uh, you can see this Galaxy S3 doesn't have a board inside of it at all. What we're doing is we've actually got an SD card put into this device, and we are running the Open Galaxy Bootloader. And if we scroll up to the top up here, 
you can actually see uh, U-Boot running, and we've got Fastboot actually running on a Galaxy S3. So we're going on through right now, and we're trying to figure out what is the problem. We have an error coming up about right here, and it's saying bad prefetch, abort handler detected, does an internal error, and it starts showing a bunch of the modules. Gives a nice long stack trace. Bad PC value is right here. And if we go up to the top, we can see this is the PC register. Yeah, and it should be somewhere uh, at the location, somewhere starting from the C000 and some address. And as you can see, it's jumping somewhere uh, out of anything to the random area of memory. So somehow we have it pulling a PC memory location from somewhere that we don't want it to. <laughs> Do you know where the PC is supposed to be located? What? 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 Does the manual actually say where the PC is supposed to be located? Well, uh, no, it doesn't, but uh, it should point somewhere at uh, where real, uh, where kernel code is, and it is in the virtual block of memory uh, C00000000. Uh, C uh, so, as you can see, a uh, link register is actually showing correct value. It's somewhere in the cache, uh, cache in it. But, uh, but PC, well, I can... Okay, I so can somewhere code. in our U-boot code, this PC register is being set. Uh, no, <laughs> PC register is actually program counter, so it's, uh, it's uh, a pair you might know from uh, x86 assembler. Instruction pointer. Ah, so it has jumped out of the kernel block somehow. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, and I, I'm just checking, but I'm nearly sure that this does happen uh, when when uh, kernel tries to enable uh, level two instruction cache in the uh, RM Cortex core. Why this happens? Well, that's a good question. Is trying to enable what? Uh, level 2 instruction cache. Uh, oh, the L2 some, cache. Yeah, L2 cache. Uh, that's something that speeds up execution because it, uh, it uh, for example, uh, I don't know how exactly it works, but uh, something like that, when function is being executed, it doesn't fetch instruction by instruction from memory, but uh, fetch for whole block of instructions uh, to the L2 cache, and then uh, catch, the, catch the opcodes from the cache. It's just faster. Okay. But, so wow, we really are really low in the boot sequence. I was thinking that we were a little bit further in the boot sequence. I didn't realize that we were just initializing L2 cache. Uh, yes, that's exactly what it's doing there. I kind of thought that would be part of the bootloader's responsibility. I didn't know the kernel did that. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, uh, the, even if bootloader does that, the requirement for um, uh, for ARM kernel is that everything, every type of cache, instruction cache, the uh, data cache, uh, MMU units be disabled, completely disabled. So kernel expects uh, system to be um, uninitialized. Uninitialized. Sorry. Hmm. 
Uh, but <laughs> the truth is that uh, especially Samsung makes their uh, kernels drivers in the kernels pretty weird uh, so uh, some parts of the kernel sometimes uh, rely on on that compound uh, had been initialized but uh, by bootloader it shouldn't be so but it is so huh. uh, kernel should actually uh, re in its whole system. All right, all right. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, Dominic. I'm not okay. really understanding. Uh, you were saying that the L2 cache is initialized by Samsung bootloader, but not normally. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, grumbling here. Or uh, <laughs> actually, Samsung kernels, not, uh, not the L2 cache itself. Ah. Uh, Okay, so I should really move my microphone so it doesn't catch that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I I might uh, I might uh, come up with something uh, pretty brilliant in next uh, half of hour and and fix this and. Uh, but I probably won't. So I uh, I'm not sure what you what you're gonna do now. Well, you know what? I think this would be a great time to end the stream, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I so, think so, too. so hey, guys. Uh, for those of you who have just tuned in. What we've done here is we've actually set up a. Let, let me switch cameras here. Uh, what we've done is we've set up the Galaxy S3 for booting from SD card. We booted it from SD card. We used the Bus Pirate here to connect up to the UART ports, which we've located. And we've set up some debugging here. So what you're looking at over here on this screen share that I had going on is actually the output from the Open Galaxy bootloader. And we are troubleshooting a problem now where the pointer goes over and tries to initialize the L2 cache. Well, basically, we're just trying to initialize the L2 cache, and you can see that right here and it's failing out so now what's going on is uh, we're going to be doing some long and slow debugging so this would be a good time to end the stream so that we're not actually worrying about uh, you know trying to smile or talk or fill people in while we're trying to think about things so I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching Dominic would you like to say anything uh... Thanks for watching. I don't know. All right. Nothing Have a good one, guys.